So you don't have a clue about math intervention and you have all these students that are struggling with math. So what do you do? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to find your starting point for your math intervention. Hi, welcome to 10 Minutes with the Ignited Teacher. My name is Michelle, and if you're new here on this channel, it's my goal to help math teachers close achievement gaps and to deliver high quality math instruction. So there are three easy steps that you can take to get started with your math intervention. The first step is to really identify where your student is struggling at. That means some kids have so many different issues that you don't know where to begin at. You have to go back to your actual grade level themes. What are those big ideas? For example, with fifth grade, fifth grade in the state of Texas where I teach, it is all about multiplication and division. Can you multiply with um, fractions? Can you multiply with decimals? That is the overarching theme. So when I look at that, that theme for fifth grade, what I have to do is go back and see if where my student is struggling at, is it going to impact this theme? Now you can't fix every problem because realistically, that's not going to make sense. What math intervention is, a, what it aims to do is to actually accelerate learning and build bridges. You're building bridges from where the student is to where the student's actual grade placement is. So we're not trying to teach all of the curriculum. We're just trying to find out where, where what skill is impacting our student from learning the fifth grade or whatever grade level content. That is step number one. Step number two is to actually find the vertical alignment. And I know that this may be new, especially if you're new to education and if you're new, a new teacher or new to a grade level, the vertical alignment of skills for math, they build from grade level to grade level. It's kind of like a puzzle and they all connect. You have to know what um, stuff from fourth grade to master fifth grade. And when there are holes in the um, vertical alignment of skills with students, then the students will struggle. So you have to follow that vertical alignment. Let's take fifth grade for example. You, if a child is struggling with multiplication. You have to think about all those skills that they're struggling with, what comes with teaching and learning multiplication. There's groups of um, understanding that it's equal groups and then we put them all together and understanding that commutative property when those two numbers are flipped, does the value actually change? All those understandings from third grade impact fifth grade because you're taking multiplication and applying it to multiplication, I mean to fractions and um, decimals. So that's why the vertical alignment is important. Now, if you have not taught these grade levels where you're getting these skills from, it's a really good idea to go ahead and learn um, the skills from those grade levels, especially if you're teaching in a high poverty school. Those students and a lot of them more often than not are not on grade level. That is my experience. 70% of my students are not on grade level. So I know that I'm going to have to go down to third grade and then move up. Now I have moved to the high school and I teach ninth grade, ninth graders as an algebra one support for my students. But sometimes I have to go all the way down to third grade, touch that third grade skill and then quickly move up. The goal of tier two instruction, which are your math interventions, is to actually accelerate learning. That means to move those kids very, very quickly. And that leads me to my third step. 
My third step is to gather your resources. Now with tier two intervention, you are reteaching skills that students have not been taught. Now, if you're reteaching a skill that you've taught and it's on grade level skill, you must do something different. Meaning you can't take the same um, lesson that you taught before and the student was unsuccessful with and teach it to them again. You have to create another lesson. Now, with creating another lesson, you gather resources. If you have identified that that student is struggling with something from third and fourth grade, don't reinvent the wheel. Go down to your third and fourth grade teachers, ask them for activities and um, resources or manipulatives that they use to teach those skills. Teaching is a collaborative effort and it takes everybody to get the kids where they need to be. So if you have any comments or questions about getting started with your math interventions, definitely leave them in the comment section below. And if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe so you can be notified when I upload other videos.